Hey guys, Darren back again with a quick satin repair video. Um, I've got this one out on the bench. Uh, I wasn't planning on making this video, but I think it's going to be a little bit interesting. Well, I hope it will be for you. So the problem with this one, it doesn't read discs. It's got the traditional drive empty sort of error message, which just means that the laser can't focus on the CD. I've got an original game in. I'll run you through the process of what I do to try and fix the laser, turn up the power a little bit, get it set just right, and hopefully that works. And if it doesn't work, we can just put a new laser in. All right, guys, let me take you through it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is um, just clean the lens of the laser. So use some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton tip and just give that a good clean. Uh, you know, just this sort of stuff. Give it a clean because if that lens is dirty or, you, or it's got a fingerprint on it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work very well. Um, I also like to remove this uh, plastic shroud just to give myself a bit more room to work. And all you need to do to get that off is pinch it on the sides. So when it's, when it's in that position, just pinch it there and the whole thing will just come off. Uh, put a genuine disc, in, disc on, it doesn't matter if it's a game or an audio CD at this stage. Um, we'll move to an audio CD for fine tuning the laser because it's more stable and consistent. But for now, I'll just start with a game. So put it in, um, trip your door switch. I just use this, this wooden peg. There you go, checking disc formats up on the screen. So it spun a little bit and then ultimately you know, it landed on the drive empty sort of problem. So the laser's old, it's underpowered. Uh, now, before you ask what's going on with this, I'll, I'll just give you an explanation of what I do. So first things first, um, I'm just gonna power that off, pull that off, pull that off. So on the back of the laser, there's a small uh, potentiometer, which adjusts the bias voltage. It's basically the power control of the laser, how much intensity uh, it can put out to focus on the discs. So we need to turn it up. We need to in increase the uh, the power, uh, get it to read a, a genuine disc, and then also move to a copied, like a, a burnt CD, and see how it goes on that as well, and maybe turn up the power even more. What you do to begin with is you've got to connect a multimeter, like a digital multimeter or an oscilloscope, uh, to a point on the board, which I'll show you in two seconds, and take some measurements. We measure idle voltage, we measure reading voltage, and then we look at the difference, and that's how we determine the correct range. The old method of, or you know, the internet method of just um, adjusting the, the resistance on the potentiometer, you know, it can work, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite inaccurate, and uh, you never really know where to stop. It's a, it's a bit of a trial and error process. So I wanna show you this method instead. So let me show you the measuring points. First thing I like to do is just disconnect the power because you've got mains power sitting right there and if you accidentally touch it, you know, it's not very good. Um, just lift up your CD mechanism, pull out the ribbon, uh, undo the ground strap also, which is up there. There's a little screw in that. If that's, if that's still intact, just unscrew that temporarily. Uh, turn the whole thing upside down, just like that. And now each revision does vary a little bit, but if you look really closely down here, where I've got the where I've got the wire attached, there's descriptions and, and little solder pads on the board. So, so these square ones are generally points that we can take measurements from. That's kind of what they're for. You know, obviously the round ones they're just components. So don't worry about them. Uh, now, if you look around the board, you'll see the markings. So we've got RF, uh, and I've got, I've got the red wire soldered to the RF point. Um, ground is obviously just underneath that, if you can just see it, and that's that hole strip along the bottom. Uh, and there's a ground point right there. So you know what? The purpose of what we're doing today is to attach one wire to the RF and one wire to ground. I could have put my ground wire right there as well, but I put my ground wire on the case of the console, and I'll show you that as well in a second. That's just out of shot. It's uh, it's just down there. So I just put a, I just put it under that screw terminal, and that seems to be a pretty good ground point. 
So that's your first step. Flip it upside down, just tack on a wire very gently to that RF point, and then put the whole thing back in. Put it back in. Reconnect your ribbon. And this wire will just run out from under the board, just with an alligator clip on one end, connect that to your multimeter. The ground wire will come out this end and just connect that to your multimeter as well. So you've got two points basically, and we can, we can give this a quick go. Okay, so let's reconnect the power carefully. Always be very mindful when you work with the Saturns, cause, and even Dreamcast, because that exposed voltage area is a little bit dangerous. Um, turn it on and you'll see our idle uh, reference voltage our idle reference voltage is 2.58 volts and that's pretty right that's pretty spot on so that's a number you want to remember just keep that in mind so mine just says drive door open at the moment uh, I can close the drawer it won't make a difference put on the CD There we go, checking disk format, and you'll see the voltage will change. Yeah, so the, the voltage is too low, the power of the laser is too low. Okay, so pull the disk out for a second. Come in the back here, and just be mindful of this power supply. Use a Phillips head screwdriver, slide it in, and on the back of that potentiometer, which you should be able to see, just turn it, um, clockwise from the way I'm sort of so that way and we're turning it to the to the left we're turning to this side and you'll get just a couple of millimeters out of it put your disc back on put your close your drive door and it'll read and you can see you can see the voltage going up and checking disc format there you go it's read the disc so if I just grab my controller, um, just go to the middle one, which is uh, the play. You can see I've just moved it to the play position. And a really good sign also is when you notice it detects the, the audio tracks on the CD in the full length. That's an extremely good sign because it's read the table of contents or something. It knows what's going on and it's ready to play. So just play audio at this stage. Don't, uh, don't try and play the game. So just push, push play on that. And there we go, 3.16, 3.17. Right, so I'll stop that. And now you go to your calculator. 3.17 minus 2.58, which was our idle voltage, equals 0 0.59. So 0 0.59, 0 0.6, that's not bad, but it's a little bit low still. If we move to a copied CD, 0 0.6 is probably it's probably just enough, maybe not quite enough to read that. It should really be at around the 0 0.7, 0 0.75 sort of range. And, and also, I don't know how accurate digital multimeters are of detecting the quickly oscillating waveform on this RF pin. So, you know what I mean? Like, uh, this might read a little bit lower than what it really is. So you can probably aim to go uh, the difference between the two numbers, you really want to go for about 0.75, even 0.8. So this is a bit, bit low. I'm going to open the drive door, take the disc out. I'm just going to put a copied one in and give that a go as well. So 2.58. Let's let that read. Yeah, it's about the same. You know what? And there you go. There wasn't enough power. So that didn't really do much. Let's take that out. Let's come back in. Let's turn it up a little bit more. Let it read. Three point. Put on. I'll put it on max. Um, I'll do that again. By putting my multimeter on max, will always detect the highest voltage that it saw. It'll it'll save that highest voltage. Um, I won't oscillate around, so that's pretty much what we're actually going for. Yeah, there you go. It actually went to the five five, and that's. I think that's now working. Yeah, our screen looks good, and I can play this audio CD. Yep. 
I won't play that too long. That's Radiohead uh, because I'll get a, a YouTube uh, copyright strike if I do. So I've got the original here on camera. So I do have the original. And that's a copy. So 3.55. Let's do that calculation. So 3.55 minus 2.58 equals 0 0.97 so that's pretty high we've gone a bit too far on that so let me uh like it does work that'll probably wear the laser out so let's pull that back just a little bit okay so i've just adjusted that again i think that's going to be about right this time let's put that back on let's put our max back on let that spin 3.34, I'll just push play so it actually reads. 3.36, so we got a bit higher there. Okay, so let's check that. Uh, 3.36 minus 2.58 equals 0 0.78. That's pretty good actually. So look, I think anything in the 0.7 range, 0.71 right up to 0.79 is pretty good. Um, it really does depend on the accuracy of your multimeter and it depends on your console itself or the quality of the discs so that's what I would aim for guys that for me that works every time it, it is worth putting this the, the wire on just quickly tack the wire on and you're good to go so to show you that all working I'm sure it will we'll go back to the game uh, just open and Open and close. Open and close the drive. There we go. Uh, let's see what this one does. It's just out of interest. It goes a bit higher actually. So yeah, I got a start application now. So that's that's looking good. Start application. That is ready to roll. That's it, guys. So that's my preferred method. I wouldn't use the resistance method as as mentioned, I would just go with that RF bias voltage. I think it is the smartest way forward. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.